So at this point, you're probably thinking, oh look, a pile of lumber. Not me. My first instinct is stringed instrument, 88 buttons, collects dust. Pianos, big ones, grand pianos, and not the uh, exterior part of the pianos, the functioning piece, the soundboard. I'll show you one from the internet. Yeah, this is just more interesting than anything else. I just stumbled across this piano soundboard. So it has been manufactured by the company that we sell to exclusively. So there's a high probability that this wood originally came from us, which is just fun. Well, this soundboard actually has quite a bit of color. Most of the wood we produce today is a lot whiter. Hopefully that's enough context for you to understand what we're doing here. Consider us as just the early stages of the piano manufacturing chain. So on the band mill we have a three foot diameter spruce log, maybe a bit more on the butt. We've ripped off some of the flare with a chainsaw just so the mill will squeeze by. I'm working the debarker and we've got Mike on the bandsaw itself. He's ripping just above the heart, about three inches above the heart there. And we're going to pull out a six by six right out of the heartwood. We've been cutting piano wood for many years now, so we've come up with our own cut sequence for producing as much lumber out of the tree as we can. So the first cut is just across the top, and then our goal is to pull that 6x6 six six out of the heart, as I mentioned. That's waste wood there. So what we do is we just keep rotating the log and making cuts on each side of the 6x6. Six six. So that will come out of the log first. And then we cut edge grain, or vertical grain wood, 2 inches thick much the same way you would quarter saw a log. With what's left, these corner pieces will then do two inch thick cuts and then we'll have to do angle adjustments to get perfect vertical grain occasionally. While the band mill is breaking down logs, the two inch is being reprocessed at the edger. These wide pieces up to 16 inches wide are being reprocessed down into four and six inch lumber. Those of you who are familiar with edgers will see that the fence is not being used on this cut and you might wonder why. In instrument wood, the outer wood of the tree around the sap wood is typically the most clear. If you look at that board on the left hand side, you can see that the wood is whiter in color and then there's some lines or streaks on the right hand side. So we're cutting out those lines and streaks and making a really nice board off of one side and we'll take the return and we'll resize it into something square but it probably won't get used for pianos. Downstream of the edger we have grading, cutting, and sorting. At this point we're going to go through each board and check and see how many knots it has and where the knot positions are. We're also weeding out things like color, hard grain lines, and non-vertical grain. Sometimes the odd board has a strip of bark on it that got missed on the edger, so we just throw it in this stand and peel off the bark. Removing the bark prevents insect damage as the wood air dries.
Grading the lumber is one of the more challenging parts of this manufacturing process. We have a variety of specs. Grain has to be narrower than 1 8 of an inch. Grain angle has to be within 15 degrees of straight up and down. Minimum length is 5 feet. We can have knots between spans of 5 feet, but I often cut them out. Color is a big one, so with most instruments the ideal wood color is just a pure white. A lot of this wood is, but there is some places where we'll get kind of bright pink colors or dull oranges. Over the last couple of years I've been setting aside all the short pieces and all the colored wood, and now I have quite a large collection of this stuff. Those small sticks between layers of lumber are called stickers and they're used to create air gaps between the lumber and allow it to dry out. This year we're going with two foot spacing on all of our piano wood which means that we need twice as many stickers as we typically would use on other wood. That means that we have to often stop and manufacture stickers. So we'll take off cut stuff that wouldn't make the grade and we'll essentially turn it into one by twos and then we'll bucket to four foot lengths so it can be used to keep the piano wood really straight as it dries out. like edgings off the edger and off cuts gets turned into wood chips as we manufacture and that helps declutter the yard but it's also part of a long-term project that I'm working on. If you're curious about the plan for this mountain of wood chips then subscribe to the channel and you'll get notified when I release new videos which might cover that topic.